Coming up in the stack, we learn about a world champion ping pong player, see the rebirth of a dead segment, and we find out what's inside the box. All that coming up on Short Stack. Welcome to ShortStack. I'm your host, William Theodore O'Dell. ShortStack is our insider view into the thoughts, passions, and interests that define the lives of our contributors. Sports are an important facet to our culture as Americans. However, not every sport gets national coverage, and many world-class athletes are overlooked. Sorry about that. Hey, yeah. All right, um, we're good to go. You're good to go? Yeah. You ready to start? Yeah. Finally, thank you. Christ. Can you uh, can you please state your name and spell it out? My name, um, Dan Campbell. Uh, you want me to spell that too? Yeah, spell it out. Do you also want my social security number? Do you do you want my date of birth? What more? Really? You want me to spell it? All right. Um, how long you you've been playing ping pong? I've been playing ping pong, really, my whole life. You know, I was born and raised on the game. Part of my part of my soul, you know, part of my charisma, you know. I got I got my first paddle, my first birthday. So it was pretty sweet. I barely hold it in my hands. A little uh little toddler with a big ping pong paddle, you know, swung it like a baseball bat, but uh yeah, it's been part of me my whole life. That's pretty great, um. So you and your brother have been playing together your whole life. How do you feel about beating your brother in the semifinals to make your way to the national championship? I mean I'm happy, but, uh, you know, who didn't see that coming? Come on. I'm the better player, and uh, he just doesn't work as hard. And, you know, it feels good to win. feels good to be the champion. Sucks for him. It really does, but uh, he had to know this was coming. Now that you're on your way to the national championship, mm -hmm. have you changed your training routine at all? Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. Everything's changed. It's now being engineered for peak performance. I, uh, I wake up in the morning, I cut greens out of my diet because I feel they weigh me down physically. So I wake up, I, uh, I eat some eggs, uncooked, of course, you got to get that uh, you know, raw egg protein in there, it's better for you. Uh, and then I don't eat anything for the rest of the day. And I, uh, I, I work a very, very rigorous physical routine, a couple of push-ups every hour, a um, couple of sit-ups once a day. Um, sometimes I, I go outside even and just, uh, you know, jump a couple times up and down. So it's, it's, it's tough on my body, but you know, you got to do what you got to do to be the best. And I am doing it. Oh. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Growing up, how has your family influenced you? Uh, you know, my family is, is always been kind of the heart and soul of my play because, you know, they influenced my, the, the path I've taken towards the championship. And really, yeah, you know, it's because it was really tough growing up in my house. It, it was hard. You had to learn to survive. You know, my mom was always regulating my, my DS privileges. And, you know, sometimes when she got really mad, she'd make me clean my own room. Like, <laughs> like I had to do the whole thing by myself. And so, you know, you learn to cope and you learn to survive. You know, it's a struggle, but it's, just, it's the struggle that makes people great. Well, uh, Dan always talks about growing up and how it was so hard for him. When uh, in reality, I really had it the hardest and he didn't. He's a liar. Uh, he was always the favorite for my parents. Uh, me, I was, I was always neglected. You're only allowed to eat at the dinner table if you won your ping pong matches. And uh, he always ate and I never did. And that was pretty hard for me. But I, uh, I used that neglect and that, uh, that hatred for him and my parents as motivation in my ping pong career. And that's what got me here today. With your viral falling out with your last coach, how has the transition to your new coach been? Uh, smooth, smooth. Really, my coaching staff has been absolutely fantastic. Um, 
You know, I hire them because they know uh, the secret about ping pong. It's, uh, I mean, I can't tell you what it is, but it's, they know it and they told me. And so now I know it. So Coach Craig, you were recently hired to coach Dan. What have you done to become the coach of the best ping pong player in the world? What? Uh, yeah, so Dan speaks so highly of you as his coach. Where did you learn the skills and lessons to pass on to him as a pupil? I'm big into research. I go delve deep into my topics. So I immediately looked up ping pong on WikiHow. And I scrolled through, read the entire article. All of it. There were 10 steps. One, two, three. Read it through 10. And now I'm pretty much an expert. I've been using that knowledge to show him what he needs to do to win the national championship. With the national championship looming a week away, how do you feel? Um, I feel more prepared for anything than I've ever feel, felt in my life. Um, I am literally fearless. I am a tiger and my competitor is a gazelle. The smallest, weakest gazelle in the safari. I feel that I am ready for any competition that I come up against and um, honestly everything that I've done leading up to this has been the most intense and rigid training in my life but it has made me stronger faster smarter better taller leaner more muscular more determined and faster my competitors got to look out because I'm coming and I'm coming hard. Who knew the life of a ping pong player was so regimented to keep them on their game? Their workouts make Tom Brady's look weak. <laughs> Don't go away. After the break, we take a look into the rebirth of late night. We'll be right back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's very kind of you. I appreciate it. Welcome to This Week at Warwick. I'm your host, Jonah Bowen. Welcome to my world. I'm a junior at Warwick Valley High School, which in the food chain of high school is kind of like being assistant manager at McDonald's. <laughs> you have some power, but then again, you remember, you're working for McDonald's. My day consists of attempting to coexist amongst a primitive and barbaric population of high school students who are devolving rather than evolving. <laughs> Our vocabulary and sentence structure has been reduced to near grunts and phrases like... Yo, hey, what's good, you blood? Hey, what's good, bro? Yo, you peep this new drip I got? Oh, bro, you looking like you in the Arctic right now. You frozen. Yeah, I, I stay out. cold, you know me. Listen, yeah, so that's, this that's real tailor, you try to you try to tell me a band for the choose and a band for the whole fit. I told him, nah, I'm not bro, with it. Nah, I'm bro. not with it. He was big tell, captain. Tell him no discussing, bro. Just let that money talk. I let the money talk daily. You know what I'm saying? Iced out, bling on me. Always, dog. You know the deal? Keep it 500. 500 all the time. Cash you, bro. Stay big captain. All the time. The way teens attract the opposite sex is kind of like a wild turkey that struts its feathers and cockles at the top of its lungs, or pics sent on Snapchat with captions, want to hook up? We socialize by showing the world how exciting our lives can be, by sitting home alone posting on social media, or by sitting around passing a jewel, kind of like cavemen sitting around a campfire gnawing on the leg of a T-Rex. The upperclassmen wanted to bring back Class Color Day this year, but administration wouldn't allow it. I mean, I wonder why. Nothing says welcome to high school like a bucket of paint and the inside of a locker. The holidays just came to a close. One of the biggest gifts this year were AirPods. Now, when I first heard of these, I thought it was a new kind of vape flavor. Adults are saying that these products cause teens to have a lack of social skills. They don't know how to connect with other individuals. Note to parents, 
They then proceeded to go buy the one Christmas present with no strings attached. <laughs> We've got a great show for you tonight. Stick around. We'll be right back. Isn't life beautiful? We live in a wonderful, sophisticated society of kids who are Snapchatting, texting, and posting nonstop. The golden age of society. But what if I told you there was a time where people had to actually talk on the phone? It was a matter of life and death. Thank God we live in a post-apocalyptic society. Buy an iPhone today. Hi, I'm late night news anchor Jonah Bowen. Today we're going around Warwick Valley High School asking some of our teachers some of the most pressing questions. In this generation, all of us teenagers use abbreviations when we text. So let's see if the teachers are that cool. Let's find out. To be honest, TBH, uh, today I forgot my homework. To be honest, O-L-L. Is it, oh my llama? Oh my goodness. Oh my lord? Darn it, I forgot my homework to English. Let me know. S-M-H. I don't know. Um, L-M-A-O means I'm going to be home late for dinner. That's laugh my bleep off. Laugh my off. I think that's something that's bad in your cereal. MGL, you're not supposed to eat that. I was expecting the Warwick Valley High School teachers to know nothing, but instead, they did pretty well. Thanks very much. Warwick is home to a fantastic band called Otis, named after Connor Borthwick's cat. Let's take a look and a listen.
all of Otis would like to thank Jonah Bowen, the Warwick Valley Television crew, and everyone else who could have made our music possible, and all our fans. Also, check out our EP on all music streaming sites like Apple Music, YouTube, and Spotify. <laughs> Hey Dad. Hey Dad. Can we have a gun? Why do you ask that, kiddo? Welcome back to Short Stack. I'm your host, William Theodore O'Dell. Up next, we have a new game show that has people guessing what's inside the box. This is Mystery Box. Welcome for the first edition of Mystery Box. I'm your host, Eddie McCarthy. Please welcome our first guest, Paula. Paula, would you like to say anything for the crowd at home? Oh, I'm very excited to be here today to play this game. I'm glad you think so. And our next guest, Casey. Casey, would you like to say anything to the crowd at home? Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first is how you play the game. Paula, you're going to go first. You're going to put your hand inside the quote-unquote mystery box and try to guess what's inside of it. You're going to go next, obviously, and you'll both have two turns to guess it. Uh, and if both you guys get it right, both of those times, all those times, then there's going to be a fifth box, which is called the ultimate tiebreaker, some say. Let's have a first look at our first box. Wow, that's a Thank that's you, David Abba. I appreciate it. I can out. check this wow. out, right? I'm allowed to look? Oh, no, no, Hey, ho. I see you. I see your slippery little Should eyes. Peek, right? What? I have to guess. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I forget these Should rules of the game. It? Am, I, am I going for it? <laughs> We want to take a peek, I guess. I can take a peek. I don't know the rules of the game. Oh my God! Oh this feels my like goodness. Who? Doug. <laughs> You're never gonna get I that. I don't know. Is it uh, clay? <laughs> I hope. Is it clay? It is. It is clay. Good Yay! guess. Good guess. Good stuff. You're killing it so far. Okay, so. Careful what you put. Wait your a minute. That into. was clay. <laughs> was it clay? <laughs> no. What? Uh, I was wrong. It was an orange. Who's running the, the show bathroom? here? <laughs> Turns out you were wrong. Should I go wash my hands? <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. I was wrong. Where did they get me for this show? Poor mistake on the producer's part. <laughs> okay. Thank you, David Abba. Looking great as always. Considering. Okay, so that was our first box. Really, really bad start for you. It's really embarrassing. I, I'm sorry. Really I know. embarrassing. I'm gonna have to get the second one. Let's okay. hope. Casey, oh, would you please? Okay, this. And let me look this time in case. This is so easy. Uh, is it? Oh, is this a skull? It is a skull. Let's see skull. <sighs> bring, bring, bring. Is it a skull? It was a skull. It was a good guess. Good guess. Very good. Good so round of applause. Scores. So it's one zero. Zero. One All right, zero. Well, David, bring me something good. Something <laughs> I can get here. Why can't you be more like her? I try. Oh, I can tell. Special thanks to our uh, David Abba, our box curator, who's currently helping us with the boxes. David, thank you so much. Good job, David. <laughs> nice job, David. I like your dress. All right, Fits this you is well. my second one. Did you second guess? I'm not going to lie. I'm a little scared to put my hand in there. Ooh, and if I was you, I would be. Can I see? I can take a peek. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, God, I'm scared. 
Nothing felonious or oh. non-school appropriate. I don't know. This I, looks like something nuts. you probably <laughs> use every day. For some reason, I'm oh guessing my. you're very familiar with this. I don't know why. Technically, it's two things, but you know, I guess you <laughs> use both of them every day, you know? I have um, <laughs> a perfume bottle running. with a nose on it? Oh. Is it a perfume bottle with a nose on it? Close. Uh, it was a water bottle with the nose on it. Oh. Good luck next time. I didn't get a point for that. No, Dang. you're wrong again. Really embarrassing. Uh, no point. Again. Wow. Very embarrassed. Thank you, David. Abba. Thank I you, David. This. Bring me something good. Come on. Where'd you get that dress from? I don't know. He bought it at the <laughs> store. Oh yeah, that's right. I probably gave it to you. All right, come Looks on. really good with the jeans. One nothing, right? This is box number four yeah. for contestant okay. Casey. Casey, if you would please. Oh my, what is that? Oh my god, that's warm and furry. <laughs> what, I don't even want to put my hand down Again? on it. I felt like a hamster. Clock's running, Casey. Oh my god, I'm not. I can't, I'm afraid. Is this thing gonna bite me? <laughs> <laughs> it I might. can't, I can't do it, I can't do it. Oh. I can't do it. Do you want to guess? I'm gonna say, um, it's got to be the right name. I'm going to say... It has to be the exact animal. <laughs> if it is an animal. Maybe a robot. If, if it was, it would be. This is a puppy. I think she's enjoying this. What's going on <laughs> this in there? Just, this puppy? show turns into you just pet. Oh, puppy. Is it a puppy? No, it's not. It is, in fact, a large a gerbile. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god! All right. That so thing could have bit me. Oh yeah. my god. I was kind of hoping it would. That would have been really funny. Oh my god. People so no I just put my hand I'm in there when the table. So, considering, even though you Ooh. lost repeatedly, yeah. Yeah. but you actually, you didn't guess that. So I guess it's a tiebreaker. So you tie. actually you tie. okay, are yeah, properly tied. Tie. Let's see that. Thank you. You're a good host. Thank you. You think so? Yes. Oh, thanks. I don't get paid enough, I don't think. Oh, I can't believe I touched the server. I don't get paid at all. It's better than spaghetti. You know? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so now currently, <coughs> we're bringing out our fifth box, Wait. which is our ultimate tiebreaker, because they are tied. What exactly did I touch in the first box? <laughs> the first box? What did you touch? <laughs> what was that? You I don't touched know. the water. Uh, the first one was a clementine. Oh, yeah, it was a clementine. Oh. That's what that was. Oh. All right. was squishy, Fair squishy, enough. juicy clementine. And they said it was clay, <laughs> which was <laughs> yeah, not correct. Clay. I see wrong with that. Okay, so she's going to go Thanks, first, baby. right? Because... All right, so oh, here's what's gonna happen. Are we going at the That's same time? Ultimate tiebreaker, you're both oh. going at the same time. Little little right hand now? fight in the box. Okay, three, two, one, go. Is it a jerk? Oh my God, <laughs> it's not a. It's a puppy this time. Uh, ew, what is, what is this? I actually don't I'm know this one. Go. I know it. I know it oh, is. baby. Ew. <laughs> I have my ew. guess. Oh, do you? Yeah, I think. Ew. You're on the clock. This is. Do you want to guess it? This uh, is clay. I'm gonna go. This is clay. <laughs> <laughs> this is clay. <gasps> wow, dude. Molding clay. Molding clay. Molding clay. I mean, it, I think every clay is molding clay in, in a circumstance. But Eddie, considering he's on, the one Eddie. who said. I said yeah, it first. Yes. Your favorite oh, you would think so, but no. <laughs> no Sorry. favorites. You, you ratted uh, me out that one is time. Is it clay? <laughs> and it is wet clay. Yes. Oh, okay. You want to give a demonstration how to squeeze this clay at home? Thanks, David Abba. <laughs> Very strong. Ready your job. Ready your well, job. That was fun, right? Uh, I guess so. I don't know if it was fun or not. Did anyone Fine. at home enjoy it? You don't have to. What do I win? Do I get to? Uh, uh, you get terrible? to. You get to go home without getting any shots because oh. I was afraid I was gonna have to like put, give you a tetanus shot because I was thought you were gonna get bitten or something. So uh, you don't have a disease. Okay. That's your. That's your. Congrats. Thank, thank you. And hopefully you don't. Um, thanks <laughs> for watching this first edition of Mystery Box Teacher Edition. Huh? Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, WVTV, on the YouTube. And be sure to watch out for more wacky content like this. Again, I'm your host, Andy McCarthy. Catch you next time. What an amazing show. What about that showgirl? Pretty hot, huh? Well, that does it for this episode of Short Stack. Be sure to catch this show and others like it on WVTV's YouTube page. And if you want to be featured on Short Stack, there's always room for a creative artist like yourself. For WVTV, I'm William Theodore O'Dell. Catch you next time on The Stack.
So there you are. Shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mine. This is it. First impression. My way in. But, uh, here's the thing. Can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Can one piece of paper really tell you my whole story? Like, that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or how any time there was an opportunity, I was the first one to step up. Because I wasn't gonna let my life, my circumstances dictate who I was gonna become. And all of that, that determination, the commitment, the drive, that's me. And that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume, discover new ways to develop great talent like me. Every year, humans habitually gather for what they call the summer barbecue. Unfortunately, leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Now, could it be? Hey, nice smoky. By George, it's Smokey Bear. These friends are going to learn a thing or two about extinguishing hot coals. Indeed, it looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good stir. Next, another long, quenching drink for the hot coals. Chilling. And finally, a close feel to confirm they're safe to leave. Smokey has this master. Cool? Okay. Bang on, Smokey. Hey, Smokey. Catch. Oh. My bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. <laughs>